We go from the fastest guest we've ever had on the show to maybe the shortest guest we've ever had on the show. That is the one, the only, the Aditi Kinkabwala. What's up, Aditi? <laughs> you know, I'm not quite true. sure. Yeah, I don't know how I'm supposed to follow him, first of all, yeah. a legend. And second of all, Adam, where would I be in your reporter fantasy rankings? In your report, you're number one. First overall oh. pick. Number you say that's it's not even a, it's a no brainer. I don't even have yeah, to. Yeah, I'm sitting right that. here, but you know, fine, whatever. Jason's that's cool. Going, you're going yeah. eight. <laughs> but to be honest, I am a five tool player. I can do a few more things. So the versatility counts for something, right? And I'm willing to pay special teams. <laughs> that's a good trait. You got to be able to move. Right. But you know, I was going to say as a rookie, but you're not a rookie anymore. But anyway, Aditi, this is it. Football is back. Thank God the preseason is over. And it's time for re- no offense. I mean, it was good seeing you on the pregame show, <laughs> but I'm much more excited to see you doing sidelines for the regular season games. I can't wait. Two nights to, uh, to, to Chiefs Lions and then Browns Bengals this Sunday. This is fascinating. I think two of the, the big storylines right now are Joe Burrow's status. We think he's going to play, but, uh, you know, how close to 100%? And Denzel Ward's status. Still in concussion right. protocol. These are obvi- obviously the Burrow one's a bigger deal, but that seems more certain that he's going to play with Ward. We don't know. What do you make? What do you make of both those situations right now? Well, it, and you, I, you're absolutely right. It's funny because less than an hour ago, I was just talking to somebody about Denzel Ward stepping in front of Jamar Chase and returning that interception 100 yards. You remember that? The yeah, November. <laughs> the, it was the week that Odell Beckham left the Browns. Obviously, right. the Browns, led, and then. The Browns won in Cincinnati so convincingly. Mm -hmm. Uh, So I was just talking about that play and how much Denzel Ward really does matter and how the Browns defense is so much about that front, but also about the back end, the rush and the coverage together. It seems like Joe Burrow is good to go. It seems like everything that we've heard. Now, obviously, I was not out on the practice field in Cincinnati. I can't tell you with my own eyes, but all indications seem to be that he's good to go. I think that it's very, very fortuitous, let's say, for the Browns that their front is so, so disruptive, is so, so ready to wreak havoc. So perhaps it is fortuitous that they are seeing a quarterback who hasn't had any sort of preseason snaps and hasn't really been at full go for the last month. Maybe he's not as quick as he would be two months from now, three months from now. Well, well, I don't know if, by the way, I don't know if Joe Burrow has ever taken a preseason snap. I can try to think about that. In 2020, there was no, it was the COVID year in 2020, so there were no games. In 21, he was coming off the knee injury. I'm not, I'm not sure. Last year, he had the appendectomy. He didn't play. Right. This year, he had this. Maybe in 21, he played a little bit coming off the knee, but I, I don't remember. But he might, he may never have played a preseason game. I mean, but it's also just about the preseason practice too, right? It's the reps in general and it's not just, and we, you and I already had this argument last week about the speed of the game and getting out there and the operation and the lights on and all of that. I do believe there's value in that. I think that just not practicing is a piece of the puzzle as well. And it would be hard to argue and say, oh, he needs to work on his timing with Joe Burrow and T, I mean, with, sorry, excuse me, with Jamar Chase and with T Higgins and with Tyler Boyd, because obviously he doesn't, but there's still something to be said for practice. 100%. I mean, yeah. you know, I'm better in the second hour that I'm playing tennis than I am in the first hour that I'm playing tennis. So <laughs> and the Bengals have gotten off the slow that. starts. Can I just give you that little non sequitur and talk about myself for a minute? Yeah, I broke, I'll ask you, please. Yeah. I broke a string on my tennis racket uh, on Sunday. What are you slamming it into the ground? Are you like John McEnroe? No, out there? I, mean, I hit the ball so hard that it popped a string. Okay, oh, <laughs> big hitter! Wow! But really, I shouldn't say this picture before. I'm very proud of this. I'm very excited. Forget the pros do it every single day. I mean, I've never done that. You're so. like Robert Redford in the nat- in the Natural. Now, now, was it a <laughs> forehand or a backhand? Uh, it was. It broke on a forehand, but I do have a nice backhand. I like yeah. my backhand actually. I like my backhand more than my forehand. My my backhand is terrible. I used to, I used okay. to circle I used to circle around the ball to hit a forehand. Yeah, me too. <laughs> well, that says something that you were fast enough to be able to do that. Oh. But anyway, going back to this whole piece of it, I do think that Joe Burrow not having a regular camp and perhaps shaking a little bit of rust off 
against a Browns defensive front that fancies itself as being the most disruptive in the NFL or certainly is laying that as a goal might be a nice little matchup to have for the Browns, at least. And maybe it's a completely moved point because Joe Burrow is just that smart and gets rid of the ball that fast. Uh, you, you've been around Deshaun Watson for, uh, you know, at least in the preseason, a couple years and in, in while on the sideline. Um, last week, uh, they named him um, captain. Do you think that's something posthumous or something that um, that he appreciates or has worked towards? Uh, and does that mean anything in the scheme of things um, to how comfortable he is and, and, and whether he will become more comfortable in the system this year? Yeah, I wouldn't diminish that at all. I don't think I think that it is something that he's taken very seriously in the conversations that we've had. He's talked about being the leader and the unquestioned leader, and he won't ever say anything negative about Jacoby Brissett or having to share kind of a leadership role a year ago. But I think establishing himself as not only the unequivocal leader, but a good teammate, but a guy that his teammates trust in, someone that can sort of have the authority to speak to his teammates on the sideline, however he deems fit, is all important, is all necessary. And I think it's a statement on how his teammates feel about him as well. This is not something that, you know, is just arbitrarily being decided on from up high and being shoved down the other players' throats. Clearly he is. In some ways, though, I'm sitting here and I'm kind of throwing a lot of words at you for right. no reason. But the truth of the matter is here is like he is the captain. There's no question. Anybody that watches this team sees that he's the leader of the offense. I want to pivot off the Browns for one second because we were talking earlier about Chris Jones. And every, every time a player there's a contract dispute, Browns fans <laughs> think, trade for him. Bring him yeah. to Cleveland. So we, we had a little fun with it earlier in the show. But someone as smart as you, could you put this to rest <laughs> once and for all? Kansas City is not trading Chris Jones, right? Like, yeah, there's Chris no Jones is not. not sorry, Chris Jones is not coming to Cleveland. No. He's not going anywhere. Uh, no, I just want to let you know Kansas. on this topic, yeah. and this is very important. I asked the chat if they would trade Dewan Jones in a third for Chris Jones, and fifty-two percent said they would not trade Dewan Jones. <laughs> That's what we're dealing with right now. <laughs> so just, just make sure you know that information as you answer this question. <laughs> Well, I mean, there we go, right? Clearly, the fans have spoken. They'd rather have Dewan Jones. So, there you go. I, Kansas City, they'll figure it out. You know, it, it's interesting that there's all of these going on right now. Nick Bosa, Chris Jones, how will it all play out? Uh, I don't. I think that Kansas City will figure it out. I don't think that there's any doubt how Kansas City values Chris Jones. It's just figuring out how to best appreciate him in a way that he wants to be appreciated next year when his contract's that, up that's when you appreciate him until yeah. then you just wait him out yeah you're right what's he gonna do he's not gonna not play the whole season then he loses his free agency so, well that, and that's where it's all yeah. far more complicated when do you become vested and this and that I, it's just it's so hard to i learned a long time ago when you talk about somebody else's money yeah it can get a little dicey so i will stay out of the all advice right. giving business and just say i'm sorry browns but chris jones is <laughs> not. not a tuber should we debate should we talk about your salary would you like prefer to do that <laughs> 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 Actually, I did call Jason Lloyd off the record last week to discuss the salaries in our industry. Yep, and yep. Um, I think that Jason laughed at me when I talked about whether I was grossly underpaid or not. <laughs> <laughs> we had a good conversation. We had a good yeah. talk. We did have a good conversation. Yeah, we, I, think, I think where we left it as you can believe your market is something, but if that's not what the market is, you're just not going to yeah, get that's, it. That, yeah, that's the... That is a, that's how to sum up this industry completely. <laughs> Unless it's Stephen A. Smith or a couple of others. And and look, man, uh, yeah. listen, they waited way to this point to get rid of affirmative action. What the heck's going on here? Right, did I just say that? No, you can't say that. Sorry, right. you can't yeah, say I that. I say that. Where's my money? I want more money. I want thousands now playing. Go ahead. <laughs> can I ask a Didi question? Yeah. Of course. We're going to do this he's later. He's not getting thousands? Wait a minute. Hold on. Go back. No, Gee, doesn't get he's, thousands. he's making millions. He's in the hundreds? Is he in the tens? <laughs> he was on Bill Simmons' <laughs> podcast last week. He's making big time. He's a big timer now. I'll oh, stop. Listen, if that, like, if, they, if that came with something, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm still waiting on that check. Yeah. Let's go. I yeah, just Bill. feel like, you know what? It's better if people think that you're being paid less because there's less scrutiny. 
right? Yes. Like if we if we have a bad take, then it's like, oh well, whatever. Techno's paying her ten bucks. You know what? But yeah. that if is I have so a bad true. take, that is think that like, I'm getting paid a million dollars. Oh that, my god! That's the realest takes, thing I've ever too. heard. That's, that's the real right. like it goes for athletes. It goes for everybody. I mean, your expectations. <laughs> yes. And it's not right. Is a yeah. lot of times tied to the amount of money a person thinks you when, you make. When I went to 100%. the athletic, when I went to the athletic, people were like, "Screw you!" <laughs> it was right. hilarious. Yeah. It was yeah. like, a, "Who do you think you are?" Nah, and I I, I, everyone loved me when I was at the Beacon. Go to the right, athletic, just a little newspaper. Yeah, yeah. yeah. now now, now. It's a big time. We're making millions a year. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. do you know? That's hey, Adam, did you know that Browns. he built his own house? Did you know that Jason built a custom mansion? Oh, from, I know about uh, it from scratch. Uh, I know, I know about it, yes. <laughs> Indeed, I thought you were my son on this. I know he built this custom house. Oh, engine, my no God. Doubt. Yeah, we all, uh, we know that. There, there's tours. There's people just tours of the house. <laughs> all right, now listen. Very wait hoity toity no, 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 Hey, no. people have been talking about how much the athletic pays. That's been a conversation. <laughs> no, we went, we yeah, went to Jay Crawford's house for yeah, the Michigan yeah. game. Now that is a house. He's got a, well. Jay made ESPN money when they were just paying silly oh, money. Oh my God. I'm over here. Yeah. I'm over here eating the same meals that Didi's kids. I'm eating Easy Mac. <laughs> you and me both, Jay. <laughs> as long as you're not eating them in the store, right? All right. G? Yeah, no. Yeah. I can wait till I get home. Grapes from the store, are you? <laughs> yeah. You're not oh, eating I'm, a few grapes while you're like walking through the aisles. I wasn't allowed to do that, but I'm trying to say, like, Giant Eagle uh, doesn't I, let you do that. Maybe I would I, say when I was like in college. I you told a, the story. I, you ate a whole ham sandwich. You can't well, do that. I'm repeating my story. You ate a ham sandwich in the grocery store? No, no, it wasn't a ham sandwich. I had a pound of, I was in Wegmans. If you, if you know, you know when it comes to Wegmans. Wegmans uh, best. Uh, Heinen's is great, but Wegmans is the best supermarket ever. And it's mostly in like upstate New York and a little in Pennsylvania. And uh, I got a pound of ham and I ate it as I walked through the supermarket. No. And then An entire the pound? No. An entire pound. Yeah. No, that's so unacceptable. So you stole a pound of ham. I stole a pound of you ham. Did. When I, uh, like Didi, I do, have, I do have a question for you. Years ago. That's unacceptable. I would <laughs> not opinion. eat a pound of ham anywhere at any time. <laughs> Ever. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I, I, I eat more in the supermarket than Aditi eats in a week. <laughs> <laughs> Stop <laughs> Which is good. That's not an insult. I mean, I wish yeah. I was... You know, thin right. and trim, but I'm not. Go ahead, Mikey. Yes, Mikey. What's Aditi, your question? As we look Get at this on track Browns Bengals matchup yeah. here for Sunday, I think we're all in agreement that Joe Burrow is probably the second best quarterback in football outside of Patrick Mahomes. He's coming off a calf injury. We expect him to play. We don't know exactly how healthy he'll be, but if you were Jim Schwartz, in your opinion, what is the best way to slow down and take away what Joe Burrow likes to do best? Like, how would you plan or game plan? to play Joe Burrow. Well, you do what you do best. Didn't you watch Deion Sanders' speech? It's not about the other guys. It's about us. That's the whole point. The Browns right. believe that they can be so disruptive up front, mm -hmm. and they need to be. And the thing is, is that when Joe Burrow is 100% healthy, he is really good at moving, at sliding out of the pocket, at making things happen. We don't expect him to be 100% right now because of that calf. So make life hard for him. And obviously, you want the back end to be a bit sticky, which is what you expect out of MJ Emerson, what you hope you get out of Denzel Ward if he's healthy, what you hope you get out of Greg Newsom. But it really has to start up front. And you have to make everything difficult for him up front. That, I, it just it yeah. doesn't seem like it's that complicated, right? No. Like, I will he's say, not though. 100%. No matter yeah. how good he is, no matter they're going to put him out there, he's still not 100%, even if it's just that he's not in game shape yet. Yeah, I, I think he's got to be, to me, he's got to be as, of course he's not 100%, no way he could be, but he's got to be as close to 100% as they think he can be, otherwise they wouldn't play him, I don't think. They'd sit him a week or two. Sure, to let him get healthier, and if they were concerned about aggravating the injury, or if they right. were concerned about him not being able to get himself out of harm's way, right. then of course they wouldn't do that. Right. But the whole point here is that the Browns think that they can get to the quarterback faster than the quarterback can get away. That's right. And now you're facing a guy that hasn't actually played much football over the course of the That's last right. month who is coming off of an injury. And even if you think you are 100%, when you are coming off of an injury and you haven't done any football work or you haven't worked your body in that way, you're, you know, it's, it's just... It's a mat. The Browns have to show. It's like Zadarius Smith said. We are playing with our seatbelts off. Okay, then go ahead. Play with your seatbelts off. Let's see it. Aditi, last it. thing. 
Who do you feel has more pressure on them to start the season? Deshaun Watson or Kevin Stefanski? Kevin. Kevin yep. Stefanski for sure. Yep. Okay. $230 million guaranteed. Kevin doesn't have $230 million guaranteed. He does not, but he's the coach. He's the coach. And so at the end of the day, the, what's the line? The buck stops here. Yep. It all starts with him. Yep. And if a player is not ready to play, then how often does the coach hear it, that he didn't get the player ready to play? That's true. I mean, at the end of the day, the players play the game, yes, but the coaches are the ones that get them ready and have them in the right mindset and all of that. That's why coaches lose jobs. Yep. And to that, to your, what we were talking about earlier, yeah. if Kevin's scheming dudes open all over the field and Deshaun's broken and doesn't have it anymore and can't get it there, Deshaun's not getting fired. Kevin's the getting fans fired. The fans are going to blame – and right. the fans will blame Kevin's the fans. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Fair enough. Aditi, the next time we talk to you, there will actually be a real football game to recap. I'm very excited about that. <laughs> Can you believe that? I'm so – Crazy, right? Hey, when are you here? We talked about this. When are you back in town? Are you coming in? Week three. Week Week three. three. Oh, yeah. What game are you doing Uh, this weekend? I forgot. This week, I've got the Texans and CJ uh, CJ Stroyd and D'Amico Ryan's debut. Oh, yeah. Yeah. One is an NFL quarterback and one is an NFL head coach. Yeah. And they are at the Baltimore Ravens, where they Mm. will be facing the newly highest paid quarterback in the NFL, Lamar Jackson. I just got my, Apple, uh, my uh, Odell Beckham. Adam, you want me to tell Odell that you say hi? You send your I love. I love Odell. Tell him, tell him yes. I'll tell him I love and him. And I'll tell him you're him. still hating on Baker. You're still angry 100%. that it was. I hate Odell Baker way more than I hate him. Yes. Thanks, Aditi. <laughs> Bye, guys. Bye. 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 Thanks, Aditi. By the way, I got my YouTube TV this week, so I will.